Hey everyone, it's me Nita and welcome to my video today. Today I'm going to be continuing to prep for my very first market. Now I haven't decided on the day and which market I'm going to do, but I'm just gonna prep a bunch of stuff so whenever I do decide to sign up for a flea market or for a craft fair, um, I'll have all this stuff ready. I'm thinking I'm going to probably do a flea market most likely probably at the end of the month early November because I because I want to try and sell some things because I know people are going to be Christmas shopping and a lot of the stuff that I will be making will be perfect for Christmas gifts. Um, I will be probably uploading a few of the items to my Etsy shop so if you guys see anything in today's video and would like to purchase I have my Etsy shop linked down below. Um, but today I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my scrunchies. So when I first started my Etsy shop, um, I started out making like dish towels and then I transitioned to selling fabric and scrunchies on my Etsy shop. And that's when my sales started to come in when, when I was selling fabric and selling my scrunchies. But so over the past like year, I decided to remove all my scrunchies from my Etsy shop because I was getting most of my sales from baby blankets and t-shirt sales. Um, and now I'm primarily just focused on birthday outfits and a few different t-shirts that I sell. Um, but scrunchies are a great way to de-stash fabric. They're inexpensive to make. They're great for freebies to include in like your packaging. I decided to not only just make scrunchies to sell at a flea market, but I can also include them in packages, especially some of my birthday outfits. I can send a matching scrunchie for Sorry, my dog's being loud. For either the mom or the kid. So that's what I'm gonna be working on today. Sorry I haven't posted in a while. I actually had two work with me videos filmed and last night when I tried to upload all the footage for my camera, um, somehow and for some reason, the all the videos that I had recorded were corrupt, I guess. For some reason, when I put the memory card or the little chip into my computer, it said that I need to form format the chip. And when I did that, it, it erased all the footage that I had. And I had two full days of me working on Etsy orders. And for this past like two, three weeks, I've been slammed, and I mean slammed, with Etsy orders. So really bummed about that because those would have been really, really good videos for you guys to watch because, like I said, I was super, super slammed. So, sorry, I don't have those videos. Um, all that hard work just went down the drain, basically. But um, today, my kids are at my mom's house, so I'm just gonna use this time to work on some scrunchies. Um, I do have some Etsy orders, but I'll work on those tonight, so I'll film a, another work with me video and hopefully this video and that video don't get all messed up when I try and upload them to my computer because if it does, I will freak. But let's go ahead and let's head over to my fabric room basically so I can cut some fabric. I am going to be making regular scrunchies and then I want to attempt to make some XL scrunchies. So let's go ahead and just head over to my fabric room. Okay, so I don't know how well the lighting is in this room. Um, just because I have a big tree in, my wind in front of my window, so it's kind of blocking all of the good sunlight right now. But my fabric room is a mess because, like I said, I got swamped with orders. And when you get swamped with orders, you kind of just throw fabric wherever it lands. So let me show you the fabric I'm going to cut and prep today. Um, I'm just going to do a few just for this video and then... Later on, I'll cut a bunch more and make some more scrunchies, but I'll only do a few for this video because I don't want the video to be too long for you guys. But um, let me show you the fabric that I plan on using. Now, this fabric that I'm using, a lot of this fabric I'm not going to use, and I kind of just want to get rid of it. So why not make some scrunchies and maybe try and make some money that way with using this fabric. Now, I have a ton, a ton of fabric that's just sitting around that I don't use, and I want it to have a purpose. So let's just dive in literally into this fabric and ch let's check it out. All right, so I have literally this entire pile of fabric that I'm gonna be cutting. I have this cute like animal print fabric and I have quite a bit of it. I probably have maybe a yard or so. Um, I was gonna use this for bell bottoms, 
but I decided I'm not going to use it. I bought this fabric a while back ago and I just haven't had time to use it, but I'm planning on making some scrunchies with it. I think that would just look really cute as a scrunchie. I also have this camo print. It's really glittery and pretty. And then I have this ombre fabric. Super pretty, super shiny. I also have this mermaid fabric. I have another like holographic fabric that goes really well with this fabric and I was going to do it as like a set but I, for some reason I can't find it in all this fabric that I have. Um, yeah, so all this I'm going to be using for scrunchies. Um, this I use for bell bottoms uh, and this I use for bell bottoms and baby blankets. I have this big pile of scraps that I'm saving for a follower. Um, so hopefully she's ready for a bunch of scraps because I know she likes to quilt and she's planning on using the scrap fabrics for a quilt she's making. So I'm saving up that fabric for her. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, I have this um, patriotic star fabric that I'm going to be using. Same with this one. And then I have this velvet fabric that I'm also going to use for scrunchies. And then I have this big bag of scraps that I need to go through and I'm going to use that for some um, scrunchies. But let's go ahead and just start cutting this fabric um, and I'll go over how big I'm going to cut the pieces for you guys. So let's just start cutting. So I used to cut my scrunchies, uh, I think it was three and a half inches by 18 inches. Um, and I'm actually going to switch up how big I cut the fabric just because I don't really like how I used to make my scrunchies. So I'm just going to make them different this time. And like I said, I'm also going to be making some XL scrunchies too. So I don't know which one I want to use first. I don't know guys. Let's go ahead and let's, let's test out this fabric. I'm really tempted to make an XL scrunchie with this one because I just love the ombre look of it. Okay, so I had to move the camera just because I need some room. So for my basic scrunchies, I'm gonna cut them four inches by 22 inches. And for my XL scrunchies, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm going to do six by like 60 inches. Hopefully that'll turn out cute. Um, I'm only going to cut a few pieces of each print just to see if I like the length and thickness of the fabric. Okay, so I cut one piece that is six inches. That's going to be for my XL. And then this piece is four inches. And this one's going to be just for my basic, basic scrunchie. And I'm going to go ahead and square up the fabric. So here is the four inch one and the six inch. I do have quite a bit of this fabric left, so definitely, definitely going to be making a ton of scrunchies with that fabric. I also have that same fabric in a purple ombre, um, but with this one, let's see, this one I don't have as much because I did make a pair of bell bottoms out of this fabric. Oh, this fabric is so cute. And I like using big, long quilting rulers when cutting fabric. It just makes things a lot quicker. Okay, so I have four inches and six inches. This is XL, this is regular.
Okay, I'm also going to use this bullet fabric that I typically use for bell bottoms, but it's just too cute. But I want to use this for a scrunchie as well, mostly for myself, but I think this would also be a good seller. Anytime I see cow print, it totally just gives me Selena vibes. Um, so I definitely have to make myself one of these. Okay, so I have all this fabric cut. I have like a ton more that I could totally cut up, but just for this video's sake, I'm not going to cut all the fabric and sew all the scrunchies today. I just want to show you guys how these ones turn out. Now for some other supplies that I'll be using, um, I do have just a regular elastic. I have a ton of this left over from when I was making masks. Um, I actually have like two or three of these. Um, and crazy to think that one time, and I mentioned this in another video, when I was making masks, um, there was like an elastic shortage. Um, I spent like $80 one time on elastic, and my sister-in-law recently went to like one of those Amazon discount centers, and she got this for, I think, $2, so crazy. And then I also decided to purchase the thicker elast elastic. I believe this is either a half inch or three-eighths of an inch, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's a half inch. But um, if you guys make scrunchies and like to watch people make scrunchies, I'm sure you guys have heard of Taylor Rose. And she's known for using the thick elastic for her scrunchies. And I have thicker hair, so I kind of want to test out the thick elastic. Because um, I have a lot of hair, and a lot of times scrunchies don't hold all the hair that I have. So I kind of want to test out the thick elastic as well but let's go ahead now and head back over to my sewing room my sewing room my sewing machine and let's get started on sewing up some scrunchies okay so I have my pile of fabric right here um, and then I have my sewing machine set to a stitch length to three um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the burrito method and I'll show you what the burrito method is if you don't know um, what exactly I mean by that. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is add my label to my scrunchie. Um, I got these labels off Etsy, but I am making my own. Um, but because I have a lot of these left over, because I use different labels for like my clothing, I have these left over. It just has my business name on it, so I'm gonna use these labels for my scrunchies. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use this long piece of fabric. It's probably about 44 inches long, um, but I'm gonna add my label. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the fabric right sides together. And I'm gonna go ahead and place my label inside, sandwiched between these two pieces of fabric, kind of just like that. And then I'm gonna kind of sandwich it in between. I'm gonna use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You can use a quarter inch foot or you could use the measurements on your sewing machine. I'm just gonna use the measurements on my sewing machine. And I'm just gonna go ahead and back stitch and stitch along the edge of this fabric. Okay, so for this next part, um, I'm gonna make sure that my fabric's still right sides together. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fabric and kind of fold it in towards the middle. I'm gonna leave this back piece alone, but this top piece I'm gonna fold to like the center of the scrunchie and then fold the other piece over on top of that. Just like that. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bottom piece and kind of fold it over to the edge of this piece. I don't know if that made any sense. There's better tutorials out there. Um, so definitely, if I find any online, um, I'll link those down below in the description because I'm not the best at explaining it. But I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch and just sew, making sure that I'm not sewing the fabric that's 
um, folded in between the two layers um, just to make just keep an eye out for that because you don't want to sew over that fabric because then you won't be able to turn your scrunchie right side out and I'm just going to keep sewing until I get kind of near the end of the fabric and then I'm going to go ahead and hold on to the piece and kind of just pull that folded piece of fabric through and then keeping the little center piece of the fabric inside the center I'm just going to go ahead and keep sewing down when I get near the end I'm going to go ahead and pull more out and again making sure that this center piece is still tucked in the middle kind of like a burrito you want to keep it wrapped up and I'm just going to keep going until I get near the end again. Stopping and pulling more fabric through. This fabric's a little harder to pull through just because it's thicker. Cotton fabric won't be as hard to work with. So I'm getting near to the end of where I originally started sewing. So I'm gonna make sure and leave probably about two to three inches of an opening. I might leave a bigger opening for this fabric just because it's a little bit thicker. But I'm gonna make sure and leave this to be opened. I don't want to sew this closed because if I sew it closed then I won't be able to pull my scrunchie through. Remember to backstitch. And with that little opening that I have, I'm going to go ahead and just pull my scrunchie through. Oops. Okay, so that is a big, a long piece of fabric. I'm kind of tempted to see what this looks like with elastic in it. And I'm tempted to see what it looks like with um, this thick elastic. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of elastic. And typically with my old scrunchies, I did eight and a half inches. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to stick with that. So I'm going to go ahead and go cut an eight and a half inch piece of elastic real quick. And I'm going to use this little uh, tool. I got this off Amazon. I'll make sure and link this down below for you guys. Um, but basically you'll clamp one end and you'll just feed this end through the fabric. This tool I'm assuming would probably be really nice too for tutus. You can always clip to the end of the elastic so, you, so it doesn't get lost. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and take this over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna go ahead and sew these two pieces together. I you can see my sewing machine did not like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it again just to really make sure. I'm gonna trim off all this extra thread. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew the opening closed. Okay, so that is my XL scrunchie. I feel like I made the elastic maybe too long. I don't know. But there's that. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this scrunchie on to see if I need to make any adjustments. Um, I'm thinking I like the thickness of it. This is pretty cute, but let's go ahead and let's try out the elastic to see if 
Eight and a half inches is too much. Sorry guys, I'm looking at my view camera, but I like it. I love how it turned out. So I'm thinking for the XLs, I'll use maybe the thicker elastic and possibly on the smaller ones too. I really like how it feels on my hair. Okay, I actually really like how this looks. Um, let's do a low ponytail one, let's see. And this one I'm gonna keep for myself, so I won't sell this one. I don't know how it looks on camera. It might look all messy, but I really like it. Okay, so the XL for this one I like. Um, let's go ahead and let's just continue sewing. Um, before I, so I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I don't know if I should batch it and just do um, like all the tags first and then do the burrito method. Um, that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. So I'm going to add all the tags to the scrunchies um, and then I'll do like the burrito method and then I'll add the elastic. It's ginormous. So this one I did um, 6 inches by 44. Now some of the other scrunchies, they have a wider, um, they're just the fabric is cut wider, so we'll see how those look. But this is a 6 by 44 inch scrunchie, and I like how it looks. So um, the regular basic scrunchies, like here's one. I don't like how this one turned out. This is an old one that I made a few days ago. But this one I did, I think, 3 and a half by 22 inches. I'm going to go ahead and do 22 inches for the regular ones, and they're cut 4 inches. Hopefully I made sense right there, but um, let's go ahead and add the tags, then we'll do the burrito method, and then we'll add the elastic.
Okay guys, so here are all the XL scrunchies. They came out super, super chunky. I could probably take off a few inches, but honestly, I kind of, I honestly kind of love the chunkiness of them. Like how cute is that? Like I really love the ombre ones. Ugh, love them. It's a mermaid one. Super, super, super chunky. Love it. This one, I sewed the elastic, all these, I ended up tying. Um, and I kind of like tying them better because my sewing machine did not like sewing through that elastic. So I'm not gonna push it. I freaking love how these turned out. I still need to close, um, sew the opening for the velvet. I might take a few inches off. Cause I feel like this one was longer than the rest of them. But I seriously love how these turned out. Okay, so I need to go pick up my boys from my mom's house. So I'm going to wait till tonight to sew the regular size scrunchies. Um, so I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay guys, so it's the next day. I didn't really do much sewing after I picked up the boys just because they needed my attention basically. So um, I just hung out with them for the rest of the night. I did manage to sew one of the smaller scrunchies. So here's a comparison between the large scrunchies and just like the regular size scrunchies. So I really love, 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 love the ombre set. Um, I need to make the smaller one of the purple, but I'm seriously just, I think this is like my favorite set, basically. I mentioned this in the beginning of the video. I used to make and sell scrunchies on my Etsy um, when I first opened my shop. So when I first opened my shop, I sold like homemade, hand-sewn, um, baby cl uh, burp cloths, like washcloths, and kitchen towels. Um, and then in 2000, beginning of like 2019, I started selling uh, fabric, selling scrunchies because the kitchen towels and the hand towels and the burp cloths weren't selling as well. So I wanted to add some more stuff to my shop. Um, the reason why they weren't selling well though is because I literally only had like four things in my shop. So like my first year on Etsy, I probably only got like four sales, maybe six sales. Um, and most of those sales were from family. So shout out to family. So here are some of the scrunchies I made like back in the day when I first had my Etsy shop. I had a bunch that I didn't end up selling I ended up just giving them away, um, but I kept a few of the ones that I liked. So this one's really cute. It's a little watermelon set. Super cute, but um, yeah. So I used to make these type of scrunchies. Um, as you can tell, like they're not as like chunky and like thick as the new ones. So I definitely like the length and the width that I chose for these scrunchies. Again, I did these ones um, four inches by the half of the width of the fabric that I was using. So like the cotton fabric, the width is typically 44 inches. So I did um, f uh, four inches by 22 inches. For this one, I think this it, for like the width of the fabric, I believe it's like 52 inches, maybe like 48 inches. So I just did half of that for this. So I was able to get two of these scrunchies from one little strip. Um, and then for the the bigger scrunchies, the XL, large, jumbo scrunchies, whatever you want to call them, um, these ones I did six inches by the width of the fabric. So I, like I said, I think this was 52 inches. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I don't. I didn't measure um, the fabric, but I'll leave the measurements down below for you guys. So if you want to go back and reference those, they'll be in the description for you guys. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys what I initially started with three years three years ago on Etsy. The selling scrunchies. I actually used to sell these on Facebook Marketplace too, um, and I ended up selling quite a bit of scrunchies on Facebook Marketplace. So. Um, my Facebook Marketplace is not like my favorite place to sell just because you deal with a lot of customers that will message you that they're interested in the item and then ghost you or they'll say they want to purchase something from you and then 
ghost you or they'll ask a bunch of questions and they end up not purchasing. And now that I'm much more busy with my business, I just don't have time to go back and forth with customers like that. So I don't sell on Facebook Marketplace as much as I used to, um, but I did sell scrunchies on Facebook Marketplace and made a lot, especially during the Christmas season. I ended up getting a lot, a lot of orders for scrunchies during the holiday season because these make perfect, perfect, perfect um, stocking stuffers. So I just wanted to show you guys my old method of making scrunchies. They're cute. This was three and a half by 18 inches, but I just like the, you know, it's very simple. I am going to make, so this is going to be like a large regular size and I want to make a small size and I'm thinking the small size I'll do something similar to this. So this was three and a half inches. I'm thinking I'll just do three inches. Um, still do 22 inches for the length. So it'll be a little bit more like scrunchy I guess but that's going to be the adjustment I'm going to make um, with this so I'll do that later on in this video we're actually going to go scout out a potential place that I might do my pop-up shop my market whatever you want to call it um, we're actually going to leave soon to go check it out to see like not like what my competition is but what like type of other booths are out there because it is a flea market swap meet kind of thing so I'm not sure if you're gonna see a lot of cute booths set up selling handmade items so I just want to see like are there other people doing the same thing that I plan on doing out there um, just to kind of get an idea of how much space I'll have for my booth how I'm gonna set everything up I just kind of want to go out there and get some ideas on what I have to work with I'm thinking I'm definitely gonna go with this place because one, it's affordable, and another reason is you can kind of do it last minute. Um, I think you'll sign up for like, sign up on Friday, and you'll get your booth Friday and Sunday, or you can just do one of the days. Um, I'll probably just do a Saturday, possibly maybe a Sunday, depending on how much inventory I can get prepped and ready. Um, so yeah, so we're going to go ahead and leave in a bit to go to this place and check it out, and you guys will be able to tag along with me. But I just wanted to show you guys that um, I used to make scrunchies and I definitely I like my new method now I like the scrunchiness I like the more fabric I like that look better so um, and that's just what goes along with running a business is you'll make a product especially a handmade business you'll make a product and over the years you'll make adjustments and changes to this type of stuff that you make so it's crazy that my Etsy shop basically started with scrunchies and selling fabric and now I'm making full outfits, embroidered shirts, HTV shirts, DTF shirts, and I don't know if I want to bring scrunchies back on my Etsy shop just because that's just a lot of listing. Like, I don't want to sit and list a bunch of different scrunchies. Like, I have a lot of fabric, so Obviously, I'm going to make a bunch of scrunchies, but I don't want to sit there and list them all. I don't know. Should I? What do you guys think? Should I add these to my Etsy shop or to my website? Like, I'm not sure if I just want to, if I want to bother with that. I'm thinking I just want to make them basically just to clear out all the fabric that I have. Um, so I can make room for more, like, bullet fabric so I can sell that on my Etsy shop and make more bell-bottom outfits because... Those are like my biggest sellers. And I also need to place an order for more minky fabric too. So I'm minky, super bulky. So I need to make room for all this wholesale fabric that I get. And then just the fabric that I'm not using for anything. Like I don't want to like hold on to it. I don't want to like hoard fabric even though I am a fabric hoarder. I just, I don't want to do it anymore because I need to make room for stuff that's going to make me some money. And I don't know, I don't know how well these are going to sell. I don't know, compared to like my, my bell bottoms, like, I don't know. I just don't know if I should use that time listing scrunchies or if I should use that time to make more bits, make more embroidery samples, make more bell bottom samples and list all of those. Like, I don't know what would be best for my business. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think, um, what I should do, what would you do. Um, definitely, I want to make scrunchies because that's a great de-stash for fabric and something simple to make and transport to a market. So I just want to make some really simple things to be able to sell out a market to make some quick money. So I don't know. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think what I should do. Um, cause I'm 
torn, but let's go check out this market. Let's see if anyone else sells scrunchies there, or let's see if anyone else is selling the things that I want to sell. So I want to sell keychains, scrunchies. Um, I'm going to make some dog items too, um, so stay tuned for a video on making dog items. I have a few things that I plan on making and selling at a flea market that's dog related, and I also want to prep some bell-bottom outfits too, like non-personalized ones as well. So. And I also want to do some of my DTF t-shirts. So like for this one, I probably won't be able to sell this one because Halloween might be over by then. But um, I designed this t-shirt. It says Boss Witch. So I don't know if I should like make a bunch of sh these type of shirts and have them there. Um, I am going to start working with my artists on making some Christmas themed ones. And just some regular normal normal ones, maybe some business related ones. And I'm also talking to another artist, potentially, I might start working with them as well. Um, because the artist I'm working with right now, he's so busy, it's hard to get my designs back in a timely manner, I guess. Um, so, But I'm going to go ahead and just stop rambling and let's get ready to go to this market and let's see what everyone's selling. Okay guys, um, I'm back home. I've been home probably for a few hours. I just went and got a foot massage at my house. An hour long foot massage and oh my gosh guys, that was so needed. I haven't had like a massage like that in probably like three years because of the kids. But um, I had a gift certificate so I decided to actually go use it today because um, I was having some pain in my shoulder um, so I thought well I can just go use my gift card and have them give me a massage because I do like a full body massage even though it's like a foot massage but it was much needed I feel relaxed and fresh now um, so I showed you guys some footage of the whole like flea market swap meet farmers market that I went to earlier today with my husband and my kids um, we had such a good time. It was really hot though, that was the only thing. But we had a really good time just walking around, looking at everything. Um, I didn't really see any like booths that were selling things that I was going to sell. They did have like scrunchies, hair accessories, I did notice some keychains. But there are they were all like pre-bought from like, like big manufacturing companies they weren't like handmade items so um, definitely there's no definitely there's no other like booths that are going to be selling the same thing that I'm going to be making I did notice there was two other businesses um, that did handmade stuff one of them did like wood engraving kind of stuff and I showed you a clip of some of the stuff they had in their little shop um, and they had some pretty cool stuff. We actually ended up talking with them for probably about like 20 minutes on like, we kind of asked them like how things go around there for like businesses like her, like how her 
small business does at the swap meet and she had a bunch of positive stuff to say but the spot that we're most likely going to get at the flea market um, doesn't get a lot of traffic she said so I'm hoping that just having a really nice looking booth set up having it like everything displayed nicely I'm hoping that that alone will help drive traffic to that area and to my spot um, but I'm hoping it's successful it might be a total flop I'm not sure but I'm I'm pretty sure we're just gonna go ahead for at least my first market I think we're just gonna go ahead and go with this place it's actually called Denios um, and I haven't decided which day yet because I actually need to talk to my mom to ask her which day um, during like the weekend she can actually have the boys because we would have to wake up at like five in the morning leave the house around five in the morning um, drop the kids off at my mom's house and then drive out to where Denio's is which is probably around like a 30 minute drive from our house so we have to get there pretty early to be able to get everything set up because the, I talked to one of the people that runs like the market or whatever and they said that most people they usually get there around 6 in the morning um, she said with the stuff that I plan to do she said I could probably get there around like 6 30 6 45 and have, re have everything set up because they'll open up like the market around 7 in the morning so um, we still have to wake up early and drop the kids off and the market I believe closes at 3 on Saturday and then closes at 5 on Sunday and she said Sundays are like usually the busiest days so I don't know if I'm gonna do a Saturday or a Sunday or if I'm gonna do both days I don't know it, uh, but it's hard with childcare because I'll have to have her literally watch them literally from 5 a.m. to probably around 5 o'clock well probably around 4 o'clock 4 30 on Saturday and probably around like 5 36 on Sunday if I were to do that so Sunday would be a really long day for my mom um, with the two kids because one of them still nurses so um, he can't really last too long without me so uh, I'm not sure how that's gonna go so I had to talk to my mom about which day she would be able to literally watch them like all day long um, and then I'll just have to work around her schedule um, basically um, I still have so much to do I still have a lot of like scrunchies that I want to prepare for um, I have some dog items too that I mentioned as well that I need to start prepping and then also all the props and set like things I'm gonna use to set up um, for my booth I have to like because I'm gonna do it all DIY just to kind of save money because I'm trying my best not to spend any money on doing this market now I do have to spend a, like some things I still need to purchase like a tarp um, because there's no tarps and I don't want to be like directly underneath I, I just don't want to be in direct sunlight because it gets hot it's still hot here in California in October so I'll have to invest in some type of canopy some type of tarp I also want to invest in some signage as well um, luckily my husband his new job that he has um, they can get like st standing banners I guess I don't know like uh, I guess that's what they're called but he can get those and ones that I could hang from like the tarps or whatever I don't know what you want to call them but the shade cover I'll be able to hang one from there too because I want to do two different types of signs I want to do my need and thread for my brand but I also try to I also want to drive them to my YouTube channel as well so I'm gonna have a poster for my YouTube channel too um, I still need to make stands for the scrunchies for all the keychains um, I am planning on buying um, these really cute clear um, scrunchy stands I think that's what they're called um, from La Belle, Petit, La Belle Petite Boutique she has these really cute scrunchy stands that I plan on purchasing uh, for my market so I need to purchase those um, I plan on making some other ones myself and then I have um, all kinds of different things that I have to make I also want to make like a fanny pack too to be able to hold all my cash and my phone and whatnot so when I'm helping customers I'll be able to have that at hand or some type of like apron or something I don't know but my goal is to try and kind of DIY everything my husband and I b 
both are pretty handy so uh, I'm sure we'll be able to get most of that done but I want to try and shoot for the last weekend in October I'm gonna try my son's birthday Mason his birthday is on the 24th um, that's on a Sunday I believe so we'll definitely I definitely won't do it that weekend so maybe the possibly the following weekend I'll do so it kind of gives me like two weeks to prep if not definitely that first week in November I'm gonna try and shoot for that because I want to get all these items out you know to sell because people are gonna be shopping for Christmas items and a lot of the stuff that I sell would be perfect Christmas items Christmas stocking stuffers all that but I'm going to start rambling because my camera is about to die. Um, I'm going to go switch out the battery and I'm just going to go start sewing the rest of the regular size scrunchies. If I have time, I'll cut some more fabric and prep some other ones as well. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just go start sewing.
guys. So I'm done with scrunchies for right now. My husband currently is giving my kids a bath, so once they get out, I need to go put them to bed. So I figured I would go ahead and just do the outro to this video. I do have, let me see. I do have a few of these left. Once the kids are asleep, I'm gonna finish these up. And I still need to sew the um, opening closed on all these regular size scrunchies. So once the kids are all asleep, I am gonna do that. I did make some mini scrunchies, but I haven't put the elastic through those. So with the mini scrunchies, I did them three inches by 22 inches. So I still did them the same length. Um, I just made them a little bit skinnier. So let me, let me go ahead and make one real fast and I'll show you guys a comparison of the regular sized one and like the tiny miniature small sized ones. I'll show you what um, how those turn out. Okay, so here is a comparison of all three. So I have the tiny ones, the like regular medium sized ones, and then the extra large chunky jumbo size scrunchies. So I have the three different sizes to offer. I'm not sure like how much I should charge for these. I'm thinking five, seven, and ten dollars for the big scrunchie, the medium, and the small. So um, let me know down in the comments what do you guys typically charge for your guys' scrunchies if you do make these and sell these. Um, I definitely need to go and factor in like the cost of material and my time and whatnot and how much I want to profit and all that. So I need to sit down and figure out pricing for the scrunchies, but um, I definitely love how these all turned out. I almost kind of want to make another like really, really tiny one. Um, so I'm thinking maybe I might do like, this one was three inches, this one was four, and this one was six inches wide. So I'm thinking I might try a two inch width and offer like um, a really tiny scrunchie as well. Um, so yeah, so here are the different sizes that I did. And again, I'm gonna leave all the measurements for the scrunchies down below. Like I said, I have to get ready to go put my kids to bed. Sounds like they're almost done in the bathtub, so. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'm hoping you guys are liking this my whole market prep thing. I'm really excited to go test it out and go and like promote my business. Even though my business doesn't focus on scrunchies anymore, um, I'm excited just to get my name out there and have an easy way to make some quick cash. So yeah, I hope the market goes good. Stay tuned for some more videos on that. And once I figure out the date um, that I'm gonna be there, I will definitely let you guys know. So if you do live in the Sacramento area, you can come stop by and say hi. So definitely, like I said, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But I will see you guys in the next video. It's gonna probably be a work with me. Um, so stay tuned for a work with me. And of course, just more of me prepping for this market. So to stay tuned, I'm super excited. I can't wait, but. I'm gonna stop rambling, go put my kids to bed. I'll see you guys later, bye.